Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. If you love paper crafting, all things scrapbooking and card making, then you are in the right place. Today we're going to create a scrapbook layout featuring this at the beach stamp set. Now I did order the stamp set with the coordinating thin cut dies and when you're looking at close to my heart stamps, anything with these shaded colored you know, images has a coordinating die that comes with it on its own magnetic sheet. So that is very cool. You get the stamp pouch, the magnet to store your dies on, and then the stamp itself. So lots of goodness in there. I love this pretty beach inspired um, set. And if you have been watching my channel for a while, you know I just did a layout with the at the lake stamp. So we have one for the lake and one for the beach. And if you hadn't seen it, this was my lake life layout. We did lots of stamping. This was a creative design team collaboration on stamping on your layout. So I'll leave that in the upper corner here if you haven't seen that video. But we're gonna create a different layout with this stamp set here today. I have these two beach pictures. These were taken many, many years ago, but it's a bunch of my friends and I were hanging out in Aptos on the beach, enjoying the sun and the sand and just having a grand old day, lots of fun. So these were a couple of my favorite photos and I wanted them to have their own layout. Now the paper here, of course I have a sheet of white DC cardstock, but these two papers, we have a wood grain and this kind of um, sapphire and white stripe are from the No Worries collection. You guys, I have just <laughs> totally, cut up this paper pack. This is no longer available. I'm doing some stash busting, but this is where I got this, um, these papers from. And I do have some large pieces, but most of it is scraps. So we're going to see what we can create. So I already had these pieces legit. They were cut this size. So I like to kind of just throw them on a piece of paper and see what I can come up with. So, you know, you could do lots of things um, with this. You could, you know, lots of different patterns, but I was thinking of doing a white margin all the way around and then layering this like this and then bringing my two photos in. I don't want a lot of that green in the photo, so I'm gonna kind of cover that. So I think that's gonna be the basis for my layout. Now these photos, they're kind of not standing out against this background very well, so I'm gonna cut some photo mats. This color will add a lot of contrast. It's such a pretty color. It has that wave pattern on the back. And now because I was working with scraps, my waves kind of are going different directions. But since not a lot of it is showing, I don't think that that is going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Okay, just like so. I want to use my sapphire ink to do a little ink blending around the edges of the wood grain paper. And so I have a couple of these little handles, but then for each color of ink I own, I have one of these little foam circles. This is a little bit of a hot mess right now. Normally it's in nice rows according to color, but basically like here's sapphire. So I ordered these little two by two bags off of Amazon and then each I label it with my little label maker here. And then I just pop the little foam in there when I'm done with it. I leave them open so they don't, you know, they can kind of get some air to them and whatnot. And then just put it on my little uh, blending tool and it's ready to go. This is just like a little, you know, organizational tray I got from Lowe's and it's perfect for these little baggies and they just sit up just like that. And this works really well to store my ink foams. So using that ink blending tool, I'm going to quickly add some sapphire ink to the border edge of the uh, both of these pattern papers. I've obviously sped this up really quick, but this is super, super simple. You can even take your ink pad and go direct to paper, but it gives a little bit different look. For this one, I'm just doing the top and bottom because we have the white areas and it won't really show up on that blue. So I'm just gonna do the top and bottom and then we'll get these situated just like so. So we're ready to do some stamping. Now I have two verse mats for when I create double page layouts, but what's cool is on the back is this foam padding. It's just like the foam that comes in the stamps. And when you put that behind your cardstock and stamp on it, it makes up for imperfections in the table surface. It gives you a better stamping image. So I have her mounted on a block. I'm using intense black ink because I'm going to color her with the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. 
The Intense Black ink is alcohol marker friendly. It does need to dry first. You don't want to stamp it and then color it right away because it will bleed a little bit. So you do want to let that dry. So I like to get all my stamping done and then come back and color. Now, another thing you can do to make coloring easier is stamp on colored cardstock rather than white paper. So I'm going to do a couple of these sea stars and maybe some of these seashells here. I don't really know what I want embellishment wise, so I'm just going to stamp a bunch and that way I have different bits and pieces when I'm ready to put my layout together. So wait at least five minutes to let that dry, but I have the coral blend uh, tri blend marker and you can color on the cardstock if you want or you can just leave it solid I really like the dimension that the markers bring because you have three different shades in one so I am super quickly just throwing some ink on here and I'm not even coloring the whole thing because it's going to blend into that colored cardstock this is peach cardstock um, and I'm just going to color this one image here and I'll do the rest of the seashells off camera. But it's just like little stroke marks blending it out into the paper. So just a couple different looks. So you can see the left with no coloring versus the one with the color marker. I'll set these up top and for her I'm going to use the fair skin and I'll do a little bit of this on camera and I'm just outlining with the lightest blend and then I'll go in and wherever I think a shadow would be I'm just using the medium tone to cast that shadowing and create that shading on her. This is really simple you do not have to overthink it. For her skirt, I'm using that same coral blend. On the inside, I'm using the darkest color because it would be darker, right? And up here where it's bunched, and then in the folds of her um, sarong, I guess you'd call it, those areas would be darker. So I'm running over each of those sections with my dark marker and then extending that color with a medium shade. And I'm not like, I'm creating kind of brush stroke-like motions towards the center. And then I'll take the lightest shade here and finish coloring it all in. For her swimsuit top I thought it'd be fun just to take the darkest color and make polka dots so it's like a pattern swimsuit and super easy to do. I'll hold that up for you. It's hard to appreciate on camera but it looks kind of cool in person. I'll do her hat and her hair off camera and I'm using earth brown for the hair and gold brown for the hat. I have some post-it removable tape and I'm going to secure the coordinating dies so I can run this through my die cutting machine and get these cut out. So nice having the coordinating dies, um, you know, for those of you that like to fussy cut, which I don't mind it, but if the coordinating dies are available, I am all about the dies. I'm showing you I did add some marker shading to these images here and then you can see how nicely those die cuts cut out. There's not a lot of white around the edges. I thought it'd be fun to use my clear shimmer brush just to add a little sparkle to these seashells because why not? And this will dry and leave the glittery finish. It's a clear shimmer brush so there's no color to it um, so you just get that sparkle. I love that we can customize these stamped images to match and coordinate with our papers and our photos and it's just so customizable. It's a lot of fun to do. I do get asked this question quite a bit so I want to mention it. It is recommended to store your shimmer brushes brush side up. I keep them on my desk in a little pencil cup and they're all brush side up. That way they won't leak. But look at that shiny finish. It's so pretty. So you guys know how much I love to use die cut shapes. So I have the stitch bracket here and the tag. Now this tag you can see is quite a bit longer than my tag die cut here. That is super easy to do. When you put it on your die cutting plates, as you can see mine are very well loved, just hang whatever part you don't want to cut off the bottom and that way it won't cut. So I got this one long continuous tag. So I cut those out from pattern paper from the same No Worries paper pack and I'm inking the edge with that sapphire ink so it'll stand out a little bit better against that wood grain background there. And this is going to give me a place for my embellishments. And this one I'm going to stamp my title on. For my title, I'm using Life is Better at the Beach. I'm going to stamp this in sapphire. So we'll put this with the um, foam underneath. And now I think this is far enough apart to where I can get away with this without masking it off. So I'm inking that up and I just want the top portion. So we'll give it a good press. 
and oh shoot i got the top of the word beach that's okay i think we can fix it so make sure i'm using my stamp chamois to really clean that off and just to be super careful this time i'm using my post-it removable tape and i'm using intense black ink for the bottom half because i want to create an ombre effect with the tri-blends if you had a little post-it note stack this would be a perfect application for post-it notes i just happen to be out of them so we'll line that up and press down give it a second to soak in and it's a little bit off you can see on the b and the e it's thicker at the top but uh that's okay i'm going to fix it i don't think it's you know so bad that i need to stamp the whole thing over again because i'm out of that pattern paper so we're going to make it work to create the ombre look, I'm using the darkest of the tri-blend colors on the bottom and then extending that up with a medium. And then I'll finish the top with the lightest color. This is the blue turquoise blend marker. So then we'll just finish off with the lightest color, just going around. It's fun to color in these little images. These uh, marker tips are super actually tiny and they allow you to get into those uh, spaces really easily so we'll just it's hard to appreciate the ombre but it is much dark there you can see a little better so because it's thicker at the top of the b and the e i'm taking my journaling pen and i'm going to kind of mimic that on the other letters and then it'll look intentional and no one will ever know we have this salty hair and sandy toes stamp so this is a little scrap of white daisy and I'm using my edge distressor to completely rough that up. I want it rough and just tattered and you could use the edge of your scissors if you don't have an edge distressor, that works too. And I'm gonna take that stamp sentiment, the salty hair and sandy toes and ink it up in sapphire ink and we'll stamp it right in the center there. And this will be a cute little sentiment to layer over my embellishment cluster there. And then I think I'm ready for the little seashells and sea stars. But first I thought, ooh, let's use this little zip strip to kind of anchor our title. And then I'm going to tuck these around the cluster up here with the tag. And then another cluster down kind of um, beneath the title. Some of these I will adhere directly to the paper or cardstock and then some I'll pop up with dimensional foam just to give them a little bit of dimension and shadowing underneath. So there's the almond ink and these tiny little like sand dollars and I thought that might get, look kind of cool. And yes, it's going to look good. So I'm going to stamp the large sand dollar. And then I was like, well, why don't we just make some pattern paper here? So I'm gonna pull that out so I can stamp off the edge. I will put a little piece of scrap paper behind it so I don't uh, get it on my desk top there and then bring back those tiny little images in again and we're just creating some random or doing some random stamping to create our pattern paper. I always love that subtle tone on tone look. It uh, adds a lot without being kind of too much busyness. I am going to do a little bit more stash busting. There were some little chipboard compliments that came along with this No Worries collection. I'm going to bring those out right after I put my little hole reinforcer on my tag there. But I thought I might as well use some of these up because they go so well with the layout. We had signed up to participate in this mud run in Big Sur. There's a military base there. And so it was a six mile mud run. And the Saturday of the run, it poured rain. It made it extra muddy. It was cold and we're like sloshing through the mud and there's drill sergeants stationed every so often, like yelling at you to do push-ups and jumping jacks. And it was a lot of fun, but we were super happy when the sun came out the following day and we got to relax on the beach after our brutal mud run experience. I'm showing you I cut a circle and it has that same peach color on the pattern paper and then there are a couple people in the background in my photo so I'm using this chipboard piece that says so perfect to camouflage them so it looks like we have the beach to ourselves. If you guys are watching this on Friday the 27th, which is the day I uploaded it, then you only have a few days left until the both the seasonal and the core catalogs for Close to My Heart come to an end. Sometimes the stamp sets will be available after the catalog cycle, but not the coordinating thin cuts. So if you love the thin cut dies like I do, then you don't want to take that chance. 
And for those of you that have orders going in your carts, don't forget to close those out because if you wait until September 1st, things might disappear out of your cart because it's the end of the catalog. I've been on a mission to use my stamps lately and I'm loving the results. We have the stamp title, the stamped embellishments, we have the little background random stamping on the tag there and it's super fun. If this layout inspired you, I would appreciate a big thumbs up and I really enjoy reading all of your comments. So thank you in advance. Here's another video I think you'll enjoy and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching, bye.